Universal presents Gangbusters. Calling the police, calling the G-men, calling all Americans to war on the underworld. Gangbusters, with the cooperation of law enforcement officers of the United States, presents a picture of the endless war of the police on the underworld. Illustrating the clever operation of law enforcement officers in the work of protecting our citizens. The all-American crusade against crime. calling headquarters. Car 39 calling headquarters. <laughs> Battles are calling. 10 riot squad to Ford and Center. Department store hold up. That is all. Jim, I'll hold him off. I tell you, as mayor of the city, I'm getting panicky. I get a hundred messages a day from people demanding that... How can you sit there so calm and unconcerned in the face of the reign of terror around us? Can't you do something about it? Do you think I'd accomplish more by waving my arms and yelling the way you're doing? I suppose not. But I'll say this, that I'm getting pretty tired of your continual excuses for failure. I expected results from this department, and I'm not getting them. You're not suggesting by any chance that my resignation might be in order, are you? You know better than that, Martin. But I do wish you'd pull Bannister off the investigation. Why? It, it doesn't look good. His having a brother that was convicted of a gang murder. We've submitted proof that the boy was framed. The governor's turning him loose. He'll be back tomorrow. I know. But it still looks bad. People are talking. Let them talk. Bill Bannister is better qualified than any man we've got. Yeah? Bannister is here to see you. Send him in. Morning, Mayor Hanson. Morning. You sent for me, Chief? Mayor Hansen's not satisfied with our progress against the crime wave. Neither are we. Then why don't you do something about it? Because we're up against the gang we can't even figure out. You see, there's no relation between the crimes they commit. First they rob a bank, obviously, for the loot. Then they blow up an office building or kill some poor harmless citizen without even taking his watch. They act like madmen. That's simple. Probably the work of two or three different gangs. Well, that's the conclusion we've reached. But since then we find that... Yeah? Mr. Logan and Mr. Haskins of the Journal to see you, sir. Tell them to go away. They bother me. What is it? This is Dickie Logan speaking. I'm busy. Besides, I don't like reporters. Oh, you like us because we have a hot lead on your crime wave. Well, what are you keeping it out there for? Why don't you bring it in here? Ah, oh, men at work. Morning, all. Morning, Mr. Bill. What do you hear from the mob? That's supposed to be funny. What about that clue? Was that a stall to get in here? No, I think we've got something. It was left at the ad desk. What is it? Copy for a want ad and a $20 bill to pay for running it in the afternoon editions. 
The boss didn't want to run it without your okay. We may want to check fingerprints. Attention all citizens. If you want to know the truth about the crime wave in this city, tune in your short wave sets to the police wavelength tonight at 9. What does it mean? Could be some practical joker with an amateur sending set. As a rule, practical jokers don't toss $20 bills around like that. Sounds like some harmless crank to me, but we'll check it for prints just the same. I'm afraid it's been handled too much, but we'll try the other side. Now we've got something. You didn't really expect me to leave my fingerprints on this, did you? Signed, Professor Mortis. That's not the work of a crank. They're too dumb. Professor Mortis? Any of you ever hear of him? Probably an assumed name. Mortis. That's Latin for death, isn't it? Professor Death? I thought. Tell your editor to run the ad. What's the idea of running the ad? Be at my office at 9 tonight. We'll show you. What's this all about? Each marker represents a police car in various parts of the city. Each car determines the direction of the radio beam from its post and phones it into us. We trace out the lines on our map to where they meet, and that's the location of the sending station. Take it up a couple of feet. Right. Astro. When the broadcast starts, I'll swing the car around slowly. You stop me at the point where you can hear it the clearest. Well, it's after nine and nothing's happened. You can waste your evening here if you want to, but I'm going out. Fellow citizen, you are listening to the voice of death. A pleasant thought, is it not? I believe you are alarmed at the spread of a reign of terror in your city. I am the cause of that. I am the League of Murdered Men. Dead men. Return from our graves to take revenge on those who sent us there. You can stop us. Oh, yes. But only by getting rid of the authors of our wrongs. Your present city government. The mayor, judges, police department. Everyone. Until they are thrown from office, no man's life will be safe in this city. Good night. And pleasant dreams. South, 14 degrees west. Mark 27. Right. I got you. Course south, 14 degrees west. No, I'm talking. For this car, the course of the beam is north, 4 degrees east. Right. Car 64, 2 degrees south of east. No, I'm talking. Car 39, north, 4 degrees east. Right. 400 block Front Street. Officer, that's where that message came from. Scatter a squad around that block and search every room and basement in it. Tim and I will go on ahead. Well, what are you waiting for? An invitation? It's the next block, Jim. Better slow down. How about turn down this side street? Good idea. Is that a prowl car ahead? Yeah, with well, the lights turned out. Pull up, Tim. We'll have a look. What are you doing here, Martin? Hey, wake up. Is he dead? Oh, but he seems to be pretty badly hurt. 
Craig was knocked out, too. This note was pinned to his coat. Thanks for the use of your radio, Professor Mortis. Hey, I don't get this. It means he used one of our cars to broadcast his warning. Tim, you better get these men to an emergency hospital as soon as you can. Right. Hey, Bill, I wonder if this is the same gang your brother was mixed up with. No. Well, how do you know he was convicted of a gang killing, wasn't he? It was framed, and I've run down the hoodlums who did it. The governor's turning the kid loose. Gee, I'm glad. When's he coming back? Tomorrow morning under police escort. He's got some inside dope on this crime wave. Something he picked up when he was in death row. Oh, boy, what a story. Listen, if you print a word of that before I tell you to, I'll have you pinched for obstructing justice. Oh, yeah, but, Bill, we've got to have something to work on. If this on. story gets out before we nab that gang, my brother's life won't be worth a dime. Okay, but we get first crack at it when it breaks. Good deal. returning to the city tomorrow morning under police escort. What? He has an appointment with his brother at police headquarters. Well, that means he'll tell everything he's found out. That's what the police think also. He should arrive there about 8.30. Yes, just about 8.30. Time is getting here, isn't it? Yes, it's past 8.30. This is the car now. Welcome back, Mr. Bannister. How about a statement for the press? Sorry, I can't say a word till I've seen my brother. Oh, come on now. You've got to get some sort of a statement here after all. Yes? Mr. Bannister is here to see Mr. O'Brien. Send him in. Hi, Chief. Glad to see you, son. Thanks. I'll leave you two alone to talk things over. Thanks, Chief. Come on, sit down. Tell me all about yourself. It's kind of a dirty trick, but you better take down what he says in there. Yes, sir. I'd better tell you what I found out about this League of Murdered Men. Do you mean even the convicts call the gang by that cheap theatrical name? It may sound theatrical, Bill, but it's on the level. What do you mean, on the level? Practically every man in the mob's dead. I know, wait a minute. Maybe I didn't get you out in time. You must be stir crazy. I'm giving you the facts, Bill. One of them came to see me. Did you get his name? Yeah, it was Carlson, uh, George Carlson. George Carlson? Oh, it's probably phony. Yeah, probably. But we'll check on it anyway. What else? He offered to get me out of prison if I joined the mob. How did he expect to spring you? He gave me a little piece of paper with what he called a run-out powder in it. Run-out powder? Now, don't tell me you fell for a gag like that. Oh, it would have worked all right, but I couldn't go for it. So he gave me a number I could have my lawyer call if I changed my mind. You remember the number? Yeah, he wrote it on the powder paper. It was Waverly 4th. Fourth... The window. Come on. 
around the corner. I think that coop in the back is following us. When I pull up alongside, shoot a picture of that mug. Okay, if the mug doesn't take a shot at us first. Yeah, it's trailers, all right. Cops? No, I think it's a press car. Put up that rod. I'll take care of it. Consciousness. Anybody recognize him? Well, not much chance. He'd had his face changed with plastic surgery. How about the defense? Blair's got him up in the lab, checking him out. Any luck? Not yet. No luck so far. Jordan. Couldn't be Jordan. He's been dead over six months. You must be mistaken. These prints are identical. And fingerprints don't lie. Randall's right. They're identical. All right, they're identical. But Jake Jordan still committed suicide in jail over six months ago. You don't suppose there is something to that league of murder? Uh, how could there be anything to it? Well, how could Jordan be dead six months ago and running around town this morning shooting people? Heard the bad news about your brother coming up. Yeah, sure is tough. And I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. I know, but we have something here that might help. Three pictures of the getaway, and one of them's a close up. Then it's your dark room, and we'll prove it. Sure, go right ahead. Say the same, Mr. Taboni. I thought I made it clear that only members of the League of Murdered Men were to be brought here. It's time Taboni joined. So, 
You don't mean he failed in the work assigned him? Me? I never miss. He was photographed getting away, and the police have the photographs. Oh. In that case, of course, you must die. <laughs> Are you kidding? I understood you wanted to join us permanently. Well, sure I want to join. But I ain't dying to do it, see? Oh, come now. Dying is not so hard. We've all done it. Mr. Halligan, Mr. Wilkerson, myself. We're suicides, all of us. Su suicides? Yeah. Well, I... I guess it's all right if you like it, but... As for me, I don't want no part of it. So, I'll be seeing you. Wait. I... I forgot to tell you that after you're dead, we bring you back to life. Yeah. Well, listen. I ain't no professor, but I know a few answers, too. And one of them is, when you're dead, you stay dead. Well, it's up to you, Mr. Taboni, whether you die and are brought back to life or whether you just die. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. What's the idea anyhow? save you from the police. They're bound to get you sooner or later. But if they find you dead, they'll quit looking for you. If I'm dead, what do I care who finds me? All right, take him to the next room if that's how he wants it. Oh, Nick's fellas. Professor. Are you sure you can bring me back, Professor? Well, up to now, I've never failed. Up to now. All right. If I got it, I just got it. But I know I ain't gonna like it. Keep this until you need it. Take him to his rooms and collect his belongings. Leave no trace of him. Wilkerson, you go to the airport and tell Max to be ready to take a passenger to Newgate. It will be safer for us if the police find you in some other city. Anything you say, but I still say I ain't gonna like it. Take a look at these wet prints. Don't say anything. I feel bad enough as it is. Forget it. Wait a second. I think I've got something. Whose gun is it? Boney. Now we're getting somewhere. Get his mug for me out of the gallery. To Boney, alias Carlson. By the way, I found this in the back of the watch. Anything to you? What is it? Must be that runoff father Bud told me about. Waverly 43752. The number he was to call. Get me the address of Waverly 43752. 841 Largo Street. Thanks. Have you a roomie here by the name of Carlson? No. Never been one here by that name as far as I can remember. Did you ever see this man around here? Oh, sure. He's been here three or four months. Which is his room? He just checked out. Not five minutes ago. He's leaving town. Did he say where he was going? No. But the man with him said something about an airport. An airport? Mm -hmm. Did he say which one? Is there one called Maxis? There sure is. It's on the Harbor Road. Well, thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. when he gets here. I'm going to feed it. Put up your gun. I'll stop him. Just be ready to 
to jump and get in that plane. Gangbusters at this theater next week.